You've been waiting. I've been waiting. The world's been waiting. I'm finally doing my Six of Crows duology reading vlog, and I am so excited. This is so funny because I had so many people like messaging on my TBRs or messaging me on Instagram and being like, why would you want to put yourself through this again? Why? Like the heartbreak. Why would you do it? And you know what? Listen, it's been seven, six or seven years since I read both these books. It's been too long and I'm ready to cry again. I am ready. And I know I'm going to cry because I love found family. Like my, the thing that gets me the most and my freaking heart feels is unity. Like Oh my god, when characters are all standing back to back to back and they're like, I won't leave you. And it's like, I'd rather die than like leave this group is like, <sighs> I'm just gonna cry thinking about it. It's so beautiful. And like, that's what these books are all about. And I freaking love it. Okay, real quick, big alert to you guys. There's gonna be, it's just all spoils, all of it. The entire thing is a spoiler filled vlog because he, her, and the third have all read this book. Everybody has read these books. And if you haven't read them, you know what? And you don't want to read them? Watch the video because it's just going to be me losing my absolute shit, I'm sure. What are these books about, you may ask? I'm sure none of you are because you already know what it's about, so we'll keep it brief. It is about our Daddy Brecker, Kaz Brecker, the crime prodigy of Ketterdam, our absolute motherfucker. He is so, oh my god, you already know. I'm, I'm remembering so much about him and being like, yes. I'm obsessed. Okay, it's about Kaz and his main bitch, his main girl, Inej, the absolute that bitch that is that bitch. She is the most amazing motherfucker of all time, Inej Gaffa. So they're kind of like business partners. Like he runs this whole crime gang in Ketterdam and she is his shadow. And he gets an opportunity to pull off the biggest heist of the century and it will make him rich beyond his wildest dreams. But he can't do it by himself. So he gets together this like band of misfits of like a sharpshooter, um, a thief, a heart render, like all these different people to come together. And it's six different characters that are wildly different and are good at different things. He pulls them all together to pull off this insane heist. Anyway, let's jump right in to all the spoils. Okay, yesterday I tried to pick up and read Six of Crows on audio while I was at work doing side work. And oh my God, absolutely impossible. Like literally impossible. I kept having to run over and read physically with the book. And I usually don't do that. Like I can just get immersed into an audio, but this book is so freaking good. Like I'm so deep in it already and I'm only on like chapter seven or something. And oh my God, I was like, no, I need to be looking at the words and listening to them. I need to be like completely invested in this, like nothing else happening. Both sides of my brain need to be freaking invested in this. I need to be visually seeing it. I need to be hearing it. I need to be in it. Ooh, oh my God. Now I will say, as far as the audio goes, I am not a fan of the voice of Kaz Brecker. I don't like it. I don't think it paints the sexy ass image of him that I have in my brain. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, Matthias's voice. Now that shit is hot. Like, they, they should just had him narrate both Kaz and Matthias, to be honest. But, oh my god, I'm freaking loving it. I am highlighting the absolute shit out of this book. Like, I seriously thought to myself so many times uh, when I was reading it today, I was like, do you need to highlight that? And I was like, yes, I do. That's what's happening so far. And oh my god, I freaking love it. I swear to god. Like, I forgot how much Inej watches Kaz and she's like if he wasn't here would I just leave? I'm like oh my god I'm just fucking obsessed with him and I swear to god that moment when he's like can you get me a hat a new hat and she's like please and he's like my darling sweet Inej will you bestow upon me the honor of a new hat? I was like dirty hands dirty hands you need to stop bruv you need to stop i'm obsessed we just met matthias and i remember thinking this when i read the book for the first time i was like am i supposed to know who this guy is because they just they leap into nina and matthias's story without telling you like really anything about the backstory and i thought when i first read it that it was probably in the shadow and bone trilogy but it's not i mean i didn't read ruin and rising so maybe it is but anyway they leap into the action like Lee Bordugo was like, okay, we're here. And in like the first 20 pages, they're already making this deal about this heist. I'm just obsessed. Anyway, let's keep going. How is Kaz supposed to be 17 years old? He's a crime prodigy and he's 17 years old. 
No. In my head, he's 27 years old and Inej is 25. That is in my brain. So the way I'm going to be talking about them throughout this vlog, just know that I, that if you're thinking, oh my God, she's supposed to be 15. Not to me, sis. Not to me. Okay. In the fantasy in my head and the fan fiction in my head, they are like mid to late twenties. Just had to tell you that. Also, I love this scene so fucking much, like of the group. When Kaz says, what's the easiest way to steal a man's wallet? Knife to the throat, asked Inej. Gun to the back, said Jesper. Poison in his cup, suggested Nina. You're all horrible, said Matthias. Kaz rolled his eyes. The easiest way to steal a man's wallet is to tell him you're going to steal his watch. You take his attention and direct it to where you want it to go. And I was like, he, she just summed up the entire book, like the entire like plot, the entire character description was just sealed in that short little passage. Lee Bardugo. <laughs> what? I'm going to keep popping in with just like random things that I love so much. But this, I forgot about this scene. And this is one of my favorite, like not only group scenes in this book, but like probably ever because this is just so funny. It's when... Kaz is telling them what the plan is and Jesper's like so your plan is for us to die like you know we're all gonna die in this plan right and Kaz is like I mean maybe and Jesper says fine but if Pekka Rollins kills us all I'm gonna get Wyland's ghost to teach my ghost how to play the flute just so that I can annoy the hell out of your ghost Kaz Brecker's lips quirked I'll just hire Matthias's ghost to kick your ghost's ass my ghost won't associate with your ghost Matthias said primly and then wondered if the sea air was rotting his brain hilarious that is so funny the line my ghost don't associate with your ghost i love kaz and Inesh so much ah! i swear to god i swear to god when she's like what do you want and he's like mm, and in his head he's like you i want you and edge and then outwardly he's like i want to die buried under my own gold and i'm like god is he a Capricorn? Like, I'm confused. I don't know. I'm obsessed. Also, I forgot how much I love Nina and Inez's relationship. And then also Jesper and Kaz's relationship. Because that's the one thing that I'm feeling so far when I'm thinking about Zodiac signs and about Enneagrams. Is that I am dead sure that Jesper is a six-wing seven. Like, fucking fight me if you want to. But he's a six-wing seven. Like, how much he wants to earn Kaz's loyalty and his respect and how much loyalty and respect he shows Kaz because Kaz is like their fearless leader and Jesper believes in him and I think it's like Wylan is like do you think he even trusts you and Jesper's like yeah well maybe I hope so and he's like and even if he does have I earned it and I was like oh my god I freaking love it and also, I'm just really relating to Jesper so hard because it's so clear that he has ADHD because he keeps mentioning that the only time he can really focus is when he's in danger. Like when the everything's heightened and he's getting shot at is when he's so clear headed. And I was like, yeah, bro, like you have ADHD. That's why. I feel as though you might all be underestimating how much I'm highlighting and tabbing. Like you see the tabs, right? You see this. Um, mm hmm. But let me show you the highlighting situation we're working with. Katie, what? And I read this page three times, and this is still how much I needed to highlight. Because one, this page, I had to put one at the top for group. Because if you just want to pause and read this, I'm deceased. Like, this is one of my favorite things that happens in this book is, like, the found family and the unity. And, like, this made me want to cry. Are you freaking kidding me? And then this absolute hilarious one-liner from Jesper. If any of you survive, make sure I have an open casket. The world deserves a few more moments of this face. And then this shit, I swear to God, Kaz and Inej, like... The whole, like, oh, um, if we don't make it out, I want you to know. And then the dot, dot, dot. I was like, God damn it. I am just, I'm obsessed. No. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't. I am such trash for Kaz and Inesh. I'm such trash. I swear to God. I don't know why that got me so much. But he wasn't so broken that he couldn't pull himself together into some semblance of a man for her. Oh my God. Also, when I was trying to read the gall of these girls on Bookstagram and Booktube, Kayla went live and then like right after that, Chandler went live and then right after that, freaking Gabby went live and I was like, everyone's against me. Everyone is against me. No one wants me to read. Everybody just wants me to freaking stay on social media. That's my excuse. I watched all of them. I've literally been watching lives for like four hours. So, <laughs> psych. 
Um, I probably, yeah, won't finish it tonight. Well, I'm saying I won't finish it tonight. I probably will. I probably will. Literally a stop. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> dirty hands, dirty hands. Oh my God, what he says? <sighs> when they're all like, Kaz is like, I need your help to get an edge back. Like basically he's like, I need your help. And they're like, for the wraith. For Inej. Like, they're like, we'll do anything for her because she was such a good friend to us. And I'm like, Ugh. As an asexual person, this shit is just hitting me all in the feelings. And then when Kaz is like, I'm going to get my money, Kaz vowed, and I'm going to get my girl. I love that he never separates, like, how obsessed he is with, like, money with how obsessed he is with Inej. Because he's like, yeah, no, I'm not here to lie to you and say that I don't have Capricorn energy because I do. And I'm like, <laughs> I love this book and I'm so close to the end and I'm definitely finishing it tonight. I finished it. Five out of five stars. <laughs> Five out of five stars. The me of six or seven years ago who gave it four stars. Who was I? Who was I? I do think that one of the reasons why I'm I'm loving it so much more this time is because I know the characters. I know them. I'm going into it. I understand. Where the first time, and even when I was reading this, I was like, wow, they really just shove you in the action. Lee Bardugo's like, here we are, sis. Like, here's the characters. And you're like, what? I'm supposed to understand all their relationship dynamics? I don't get it. But knowing the characters and going into it is so good. Oh my god. And just to clear the air, you do not need to read Shadow and Bone before you read this. You don't. Period. You don't need to. The only thing that it would explain is, like, some of the magic. But even then, it's not really that well explained in Shadow and Bone. Like, it's really not. Also, Shadow and Bone is bad. Sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm really not sorry. I did a whole reading vlog about it. The book is bad. Anyway, the whole series is that, that whole series is bad. But Six of Crows, oh my god, it's so good. And let me show you the tabbing system that we're working with. Okay. Oh my god. And I actually already went through to try and remove. I removed four or five tabs where I was like, these are not necessary. So the tabbing system we ended up with is characters separately and together. Because it, I, I was like, there's six characters. I love all of them. I can't have... Each of them have their own tab, and they're all in relationships. So, I have red for Kaz and Inej separately and together. Then orange for Jesper and Wylan. Blue for Nina and Matthias. And then yellow is for group. So, what I did was, on the top, if there was a page that I was like, this entire thing. And it's always group and Kaz, obviously. But let me give you an example. So, the first tab that is the group, I freaking love this scene, I already showed you is the one about what's the easiest way to steal a man's wallet. Let's see what the next one is. I'm just probably Kaz and Inej, yeah. So it's, what is this? Oh yeah, where she's in danger and he saves her. Oh my God, are you kidding me? No one look at me, I'm screaming into the night. I have to work a really busy day tomorrow. So I don't know if I'll be able to start Crooked Kingdom, but it's the plan. I'm gonna pick up this absolutely gorgeous book. This is freaking stunning. It's an absolute brick, I'm so obsessed. I'm going to pick this up. Um, I'm going to try to read some of it tonight. If I can find some more motivation, I need to finish editing a vlog. So I might watch some reading sprints and then edit and read while I do that. I really don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get any of this done because I'm like, ugh, I feel like a zombie. I'm only on page like 35. I'm making an omelet, by the way. <laughs> See this. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this when I was reading Six of Crows. This just keeps playing back in my head now, but... I don't like Matthias. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. It's like basically the way that I'm feeling about Matthias in the first book was like, he's got Nazi vibes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the parallels between like his like Druskella thing and like the Grisha is very Nazi-ish. Like, am I not supposed to be getting Nazi vibes? Because I hella am, and he's so overprotective, and he's so, like, brute-ish, like, in his overprotectiveness, and, like, I don't think that's cute. I love Nina. Love Nina. And if you see, like, all the blue tabs in Six of Crows, it's mainly because of Nina, and, like, I want to love Matthias because I love Nina, but, like, I just really don't. Anyway, 
I've already stained the book. Let's not worry about that. Anyway, um, I'm kind of second guessing my tabbing process from the first book because this one, though absolutely stunning, is red. And I chose Kaz and Inej individually and together as red. And I feel like they just disappear on the pages. And I'm like, do I keep them red or do I switch it out and make Nina and Matthias red and then Kaz and Inej blue for this book? Mm. Is it weird to have the tabs be separate from the first and second book? I don't know. I think I'm going to hit you up like maybe 50 more pages in to see about the tabs and then decide then. I spent about 20 minutes deliberating on the tab system and I've changed everything. So let me tell you. Here we go. In the last one, Kaz and Inej, and this is for obviously relationships and them separately. Kaz and Inej was red. That's not going to work out. Change it to yellow because I really like the way the yellow tabs look. And I do have quite a few of those. And then I switched um, blue used to be Nina and Matthias. And now it's Jesper and Wyland because in Six of Crows, that ended up being the second most used tab was for Jesper. Orange is for Nina and Matthias because I love Nina, but like Matthias, no. So they get the most drifting into the color of the book tab and then green is for group that is the one that I have the least amount of tabs for but I didn't want to use red for it because red completely disappears and the group are like probably my favorite tabs that I put in here so anyway what is this book about oh hilarious I forgot to tell you about it um I mean you've already probably read the book if you're watching this video but Inej was captured at the end of Six of Crows and let me tell you, this book is about them trying to get her back. I'm sure it's about more than that afterward, but as far, I'm like 70 pages in, and that's like the whole point of the book so far. But I don't understand why they think that they're going to get their money if they get Inej back. Like, the whole plot is like, get Inej, get our money, simple as that. And I'm like, what? Like, if, if they didn't get their money at the end of Six of Crows, I don't understand why they think they're going to get their money now. I feel like I kind of lost the plot a little bit there. And I don't really care. Honestly, I'm still loving it. Like, honestly, I I'm sure it's, it's not a plot hole. It's just me being confused. But even if it was a plot hole, I would be like, who cares? Five stars. <laughs> but anyway, I am enjoying this. It is taking a minute for me to get into it, which it did for Six of Crows as well. It does for most books where I'm having to really settle into the story. And then I start just freaking tabbing the shit out of everything. But yeah, it's going well. Little two prong update. One, I swear to God. When Van Eck goes to break Inej's legs and she's like, stop, no, like he won't trade for me if you do that. And she realizes that what she's saying is Kaz won't want her if she's broken. Like if she's not the Wraith, he won't have any use for her. And I was like, oh God, that's so sad. And then like a later when um, Inej and Alice are doing the swap, like they're doing the swap for... Kaz getting Inej and Van Neck getting his wife. Whenever they're making that swap and Inej whispers something in Van Neck's ear before she crosses the bridge. And later Kaz is like, what did you say to him? And she says, I said to him, you'll see me once more, but only once. I was like, oh my God, bitch. Like, I don't know. That was just like freaking chills. I was like, yes, bitch. She's like, yeah, you'll see me again, but it'll be when I kill you. Oh, we stand Inej Gaffa in this house. Another Inej is that bitch moment. I say it can't. Head on down to Gimmons Bake. You'll see my name at the top of her contract, and that means I say where she goes. Understood, sir, said Kaz. And as soon as I find her, I'll let her know. She's right. Haskell broke off, his jaw dropping in disbelief. She was right here. Yeah, because Inej is that bitch. She's like, oh, control me? Psych. And just slips into the shadows. Gotta love her. I just got to that part. That part. If you've read this book, you already know. If you love Kaz and Inej, you already know. And I forgot that it happened this soon into the book. Like, I thought it was going to be like three-fourths of the way in. But no. Whew. It's when Inej is like, I didn't think you would come for me. When uh, Van Eck had her held hostage. And he's like, yeah, of course I would. You're my crew. We don't leave crew to the mercy of merch scum. And she's like, what if he had broken my legs? Would you come for me then, Kaz? When I couldn't scale a wall or walk a tightrope? When I wasn't the wraith anymore? And Kaz, seemingly cold and callous, emotionless Kaz, who never says the right thing, says the most poetic shit I've ever heard in my goddamn life. He says, 
I would come for you, he said, and when he saw the weary look she shot him, he said it again. I would come for you, and if I couldn't walk, I'd crawl to you, and no matter how broken we were, we'd fight our way out together, knives drawn, pistols blazing, because that's what we do. We never stop fighting. And if I couldn't walk, I'd crawl to you. I, I swear to God, that if I couldn't walk, I'd crawl to you. I'm getting that fucking tattooed on my goddamn face. So every time I look at myself, I have to see the loveliest words in the fucking universe. How dare Lee Bardugo? Like, Lee Bardugo? <laughs> I swear, that quote alone is like, I don't care if I'm forgetting that the rest of the book is trash. It's gotta be five stars because that... <sighs> I... Stop. It's been a minute since I popped in because I'm not gonna lie to you, Crooked Kingdom, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit boring. I couldn't get, I can't get it out. I can't get it out. It's not. It's just a little bit more. It's not as fast-paced and interesting as Six of Crows. And I, that's just not. It hurts me to say that. It hurts me to admit it to myself, to be honest. But it's just, there's not really that many things where I'm like, oh my god, that happened. It's like, okay, we're just kind of steadily moving along. And honestly, Wylan is such a big part of this book. And he's just not my favorite character. Like, he's he's so great. Like, I love Wylan. And he's a type 6. I'm a type 6. Or at the very least, he's a 5 wing 6. But also speaking of that, uh, like, I love Wylan, but he's just a little boring. But speaking of Enneagram, I've changed my mind. Jesper's absolutely a 7 wing 6. He's a 7 wing 6 cut dry let's get to the point hello case closed seven wing six i'm finally willing to admit that kaz brecker is an eight he's either a five or an eight but i'm like okay he's either a five or an eight like no holds bar i won't take any other answers uh nina i think is a three because no matter what um stage she's on she's on stage no matter where she is she's like spotlight on me what do I have to be? I'm going to be the one who is loved the most. I'm going to be the one who's lusted after the most. I'm going to be the smartest, the prettiest, the sexiest. Like, whatever she is, she's going to be the most of it. And we love her for that. And then, um, let's see. Inej? Inej might be a two. I'm not really sure about Inej. She might be a two. Matthias is a one. Freaking one motherfucker, I swear to God. It's so frustrating. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, a part of the book I loved. Let's reel back to the beginning of this clip. Um, I just got to the part, I'm on like page 358. And whenever Kaz comes to an edge, like before he goes into Ketterdam, where, where they're like, you're gonna die. Like everybody in Ketterdam is looking for you. And he gives her a piece of paper and she's like, this is my contract. And he has sold everything he has, everything he owns. He sold it all of the city that he owns. He sold it all. He sold his, like all of the houses he owns, everything. He's given up all his savings, all of his favors to pay off her contract. And she's like, you did that for me? Like what? And he's like, I don't want anybody to own you, even me. And then he thinks to himself, well, that isn't true. I've been thinking of a million ways to, um, force you to stay in this city but you shouldn't like you should not be beholden to anyone and oh my god that just fucking touched me because I, i'm going on a tangent that like probably nobody's even gonna understand but have you seen angel have you seen An angel the vampire the, va the vampire series or whatever the spinoff of buffy because lila and wesley is my favorite relationship of all time it's my favorite shit my otp of all time and do you guys know that scene <laughs> when he breaks in <laughs> to Wolverman Arts records to burn her contract because he wants her to be free and he wants her to rest in peace. And this has the same vibes. It has the same vibes. It's literally like whew, immaculate. The vibes are immaculate. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. Okay, I take it back. Lee Bardugo just came from a whole life. I just said that the <laughs> Crooked Kingdom was a little like, get a little boring. And then, oh my God, I just read that chapter where Kaz is helping Inez change her bandages. I'm about to go back and read it again. That's what I'm going to say. I read it again and the sexual tension. It's extreme. It's extreme. Oh my God. I. Dirty hands and the wraith. 
this is like, oh my God, I feel like I'm reading this and what I'm imagining is Sarah J Maas. And what I'm reading is Lee Bardugo. See, that's what I want because when I read Sarah J Maas, I'm like, oh, she's giving me everything. But Lee Bardugo's like the tension. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want because I don't really want to read about them having sex. I don't care about that. But like the tension is so good. And I swear to God, this fucking line. <clears throat> he didn't deserve peace and he didn't deserve forgiveness. But if he was going to die today, maybe the one thing he'd earned was the memory of her. Brighter than anything he would ever have a right to. To take with him to the other side. <sighs> Daddy dirty hands. Take my life Oh my god, I'm making another omelet. Can you guys tell that this is, like, all I eat? Anyway, um, when Wylan, like, when Van Eck is like, do you want us to torture you? Because we'll torture you to get the information. And he pulls Wylan's, like, gag down, and Wylan just stares him, like, straight in the eye and spits in his face. I was like, baby boy! Baby boy! Like, Wylan! I was like... Oh my God, I don't think I've ever wanted to clap somebody on the back so hard. <laughs> Love that for him. What's the deal with Dunasha? What's her deal? Because like all of a sudden, Inej has a mortal nemesis. <laughs> like Dunasha's acting like her and Inej have been enemies since the day they were born. And I'm like, bitch, we just met you like two chapters ago. We just met you. And she's hell bent on killing Inej. We're at like the last hundred pages. And a nemesis is introduced. I just feel like that might be unnecessary. I'm on chapter 33 and I only have this much left. So what I'm going to do, because I have a lot of chores I need to get done. Actually, let me show you. What? This isn't even just clothes. Like what? What am I doing? And then um, there's this mess. There's <laughs> whatever's going on in there. And then I have dishes I need to do. There's just like a lot of things that need to happen right now. So I need to get chores done. So I put my headphones in. I'm going to listen to the audio and I'm going to time lapse me doing my chores or at least some of them. And you're going to see me running back to the book a lot. Like it's just going to be like me folding a couple pieces of laundry, running back to the book, folding, running back to the book, because this is not a book that I can't like physically read it while I listen to it. Just because I want to highlight so much that like annotating, it's, I just have to have the book close by while I listen to it. So I hope you have fun watching me run around like a chicken with my head cut off. We did it. We finished it. And God, does it look so good with the freaking dust jacket on it! I'm obsessed. I definitely did not like this as much as Six of Crows, like for sure. But there are moments in this that are so worth it. Like if you love the characters, I did <clears throat> tear up quite a few times because again, I just tear up at Unity so much. I did tear up at Matthias's death because oh, Nina and like, it's, it's sad. I'm I'm not a huge fan of Matthias, but I'm a huge fan of Nina. And, like, that really hurt. And the whole, like, all the wolves were calling me home. I was like, you just get out of here with that messly Bardugo. You get out of here. And then I swear to God, um, whenever Jesper, they're, sitting, they're standing there, and he's looking around at all of them, and he's like, I don't want to say goodbye to these people. God, that hurt my heart so bad. And I started crying. I was like, ah! When he's like, why is this different? Like, I've lost friends. Like, people have died. Like, my friends have died. But somehow just leaving this group of people and going to live our separate lives, like, hurts more, even more. And I'm like, just literally shut the fuck up. Like, shut up! I'm like, God, is so sad. And then I swear to God, whew, Inej and Cass. Whenever she's like, he buys her the ship that says the Wraith, I was like, you got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. Inej, like the most bad bitch. Are you kidding me? Yes, right off into the freaking sunset. When Inej tells Kaz, like, 
He's like, oh, I thought you wanted to hunt slavers. She's like, I want to hunt all of them. I want to hunt the barrel bosses, the, uh, the slavers, the um, politicians, like anyone, any of these criminals who, who enslave people, anyone like Tonta Helene, like anyone who does stuff like that. And he's like, that's half the city. And she's like, yeah, and I want you to do it with me. And he's like, I'm a barrel boss. And she's like, yeah, but you would never do something like that. Like you're not the same as them. And he's like, you've always seen the, the best in me. Like you're a fool. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm not saying you're a hero. You are a monster, but I need you to be the monster that this city needs. And I'm like, that was so beautiful. And she's like, you take the land and I'll take the sea and we'll rid the world of as many bad people as possible, but we have to do it together. I was like, go ahead and send me up to God. Because I, just, I loved it. Should I stop here? I feel like I should stop talking here. I'm having too many emotions. Um, I've been watching like everybody and their freaking mother's video about Six of Crows, like their reading vlogs. And every single one that has been filmed in the last year is like, oh, well, I wonder what the third one's going to be about. And I was like, what are these these people? What are you talking about? There's no third Six of Crows book. It's a duology. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Why is nobody talking about this? <laughs>
night, day, evening, dusk, dawn. Am I missing one? Midnight? I don't know. Whatever you're having, have a good one. Bye.